Hello, I'm David Kurzel here at Spraymation, and today I'm going to talk about how the guns actually operate. So regardless of what uh, applicator, gun, whatever, we have to begin with a seat, which is simply a part with a hole in it where a plunger or a needle can intersect with the hole and with a little extra gun body create a valve. So basically that's what all applicators uh, are, it's just simply a valve. The fluid somehow gets into this area And until the valve is actuated, the, the needle on the seat makes a seal and doesn't allow the fluid to flow through. To activate the gun, to cause flow to happen, the, the needle is, is moved up, causing that point to move up, and then the fluid can come down the hole, come down the hole, go through the tip, and come out. If we had a tip in our drawing, it would be down here. And come here like this. And it would have a smaller hole that goes up to here to guide the fluid out and shape it however we need it shaped. Be it just a line, be a, uh, we're just dispensing a dot, uh, this could be a spray tip, all kinds of things. Every glue gun basically works this way. There's one real small variation in some brands of uh, valves that they would replace the end of the needle, Spraymation always uses a cone at the end of their needle, with a ball. And the ball comes in here and seats just like the cone needle. The ball has some advantages that it's a standard manufactured ball bearing. It's perfectly round every time, minimal cost, and that. The problem is that when the ball intersects the seat surface, which actually has a small angle to it, like this, the ball has a larger surface touching the angle in the seat, but the advantage of the ball is when you pull it back, there's a larger flow area for the amount of distance you have to pull the needle back. We prefer the cone because we are willing to sacrifice a little bit of stroke to get the best seal we can get. So now I guess we've got to talk about for a minute how do we move the plunger up. So that's going to be the next goal. Now an electromatic gun, as we've been talking about uh, the previous things and everything, has one moving part, the needle. And to move the needle, we have to have a plunger. So the plunger and the needle in our system uh, is normally one piece. Sometimes it's two pieces, sometimes it's even three pieces with the, with the armature part of the plunger being one piece. Then there is the needle part and then there's a carbide point on the end. Normally we use, have the end of the plunger down here, made out of silicon carbide. Okay, very hard material, it's really ceramic-like metal, uh, and that gives this part very long life. The seat down here is made out of stainless steel, and the reason a little softer seat is nice is it conforms and it shapes rather than chips away. If you use carbide on carbide, it's like rubbing two plates or two pieces of glass together, and they tend to chip and crack and do things like that. Basically, in, with most fluids, most glues especially, you can expect 100 million operations out of a combination of a carbide tip plunger and a stainless steel seat. At the end of that time, you replace the seat and you can do another 100 million. The plunger starts wearing out around 500 million operations. So the seat is probably the first part that would be considered for changing out when the gun's operation starts getting to the point where you get leaks 
or the amounts have changed significantly from what you originally expected. <coughs> Since this is our only moving part, we're going to have to move it somehow. And this is an all electric gun. So we'd move it with a solenoid coil. So, a different color. So out here we have a solenoid coil. Well, I guess I really have to complete this drawing, don't I? The, this, the fluid is up in here, and it flew up in here, here. There's going to be a mechanical stop here, and we're going to have a hole up here where fluid goes in. in. So that fluid is going to come in, fill this whole cavity around the, the plunger. There actually are slots and holes in the plunger to help the fluid flow through because some of these uh, adhesives are relatively thick. But so this entire cavity is full of pressurized adhesive. And we're going to take our solenoid coil, which is just a coil of wire, and we're going to put it around outside the fluid tube of the gun here. So this is just a, a coil of wire. If you cut it like this, you just see all the ends of the wire here. This wraps around several thousand turns of wire to make a strong electric, uh, take an electric current and turn it into a strong magnetic field. Um, I need to move the plunger down just to show how this stuff really is working. I need to move that down. Okay. So normally we start in the closed position with the valve off. The electric field from this, uh, this electromagnet is going to come out the ends and circulate through the, uh, through the plunger. So when you energize this coil, be it 24 volts DC, uh, 165 volts DC from a gun, uh, high voltage gun driver, even AC. It all ends up working the same. The magnetic field comes around, comes here, goes through here, goes back around this way, and another one goes around this way. Now, one of the interesting things about magnetic fields is they, like everything in magnets, they either pull together or they repel apart. What happens in this situation is everything in this magnetic field loop wants to pull together. It wants to attract to itself. Okay. The coil is rigidly mounted to the fluid tube. There is a, a, a fixed distance between the coil and the armature part of the plunger. And the only place it's really a movable gap is up here at the top of the plunger. So what happens is all the force from the magnetic field ends up right here at the top of the plunger pulling up. So it begins to pull up. The plunger slowly moves up and moves up and the gun opens. Once that is all the way up, the magnetic field is as closed and as a high intensity as possible for the amount of current that we're putting through the coil. When it comes time to turn off the coil, the magnetic field goes away. Get rid of it. And, well, if it's just like my drawing here, nothing happens. But in reality, there's always a spring in this area that pushes the plunger back down, pushes it from open to closed, gets rid of all this other stuff here, and generates the gap again. Now this is a little bit of an oversimplification, um, because what's really also very important about this whole thing is the coil housing, the outside of the coil. Now it may just look like a pretty part or a mounting accessory or something like that, but what the, the coil housing does is, when we have these circles of flux, it really directs those circles of flux. So the coil housing out here is a magnetic circuit path. 
So this will flow through this. It would rather flow through the iron in that casting than it would rather than in the, the air, because the, uh, the iron has a lower magnetic resistance than the air does. And then there's a strange piece that's down in here on all guns. Well, it really is more up here. It's actually here. It has to be above this chamfer. And that helps complete the magnetic circuit. So really about the only air gap is this little bit up at the top, absolutely intensifying the strength of the magnetic field to pull the gun open. So pretty much that's how an electric gun works. Why the coil housing has to be there why the coil housing has to be made out of a magnetic steel, and how all the pieces move and carry on. Next, I'm going to talk about the air-operated gun. Basically, as I said before, they all have the same basic valve configuration down here. And we still have the same problem that somehow we have to pull the needle up. The way that most uh, competitive air-operated guns work is they bring the fluid into the side of this cavity. And what they do is up here, they put an O-ring seal in this cavity. And that O-ring seal keeps the fluid, traps it here at the bottom, or on the top, and at the bottom it's trapped by the seat and the point on the uh, needle. So it, it's obvious that once this needle is uh, pulled up, this gap will open, the fluid will flow through, the, uh, the needle can slide by the O-ring seals. It's pretty simple, it's pretty basic. To make it work, what they normally do, uh, I don't know what the black one, um, <laughs> anyway, they, they have a, um, a larger piston up here, and they have the spring, because everybody needs a spring to close again. And this will be in another cavity, and there'll be an O-ring right here, and an O-ring right here. And what they do is they put compressed air in here, from another valve, they switch the air, the air comes through the tube, goes in here, and pushes this piston up. When they want to close the gun, they remove the air, the spring closes and pushes it down. The big thing that's different between this and the Spraymation Electromatic gun is there are two seals here that are dynamic seals. They're being moved. Our plunger doesn't touch anything except the stop at the seat and the stop at the top. They still have the stop at the seat, some, a mechanical stop up here at the top, but as this piston moves up and down, it has to slide by these O-rings that are pressurized and these other ones that are pressurized with air. This causes a lot of drag. It also causes the biggest cause of failure in these guns that these seals, as they're rubbing against mechanical surfaces, wear out. They're inexpensive seals, but they still have to, you have to stop, replace them, and, uh, and service the, the applicator. In the electromatic version, the seat down here is the first part that's going to wear out. In this version, several sets of O-rings are going to wear out before the seat ever wears out. Now, from some of the other stuff that we've talked about, um, you know that Spraymation also makes air-operated guns. So, you know, uh, what do we do that's different than these people? What we do that's really different here is we use a different type of seal. Instead of using these seals, we use a little bigger piston. But what we use in here are spring-loaded graphite-filled Teflon seals. And they're kind of a U-cup seal. And so, because they're Teflon, it's a really good bearing surface. It's a great surface for these parts to slide on. The, also, the, the way that works is 
that with an O-ring, you have to compress it for the highest pressure you ever expect to use. The nice thing in a U-cup kind of seal, your fluid pressure actually goes up in the U and expands the U and tightens the seal as the pressure goes higher. So if you're running really high pressures, the seal actually puts more force on sealing. If you're running low pressures, it relaxes enough that it extends its life. We also use the uh, uh, spring-loaded Teflon seals up here in the piston, except we use a pair of them, one set going each way. And then this is air open. And then we do air close. So we don't just rely on the spring to be closing these air operated guns. We actually use the compressed air to open and then later on to close. We have the spring here as a fail safe device, but it isn't the primary closing thing. So these air operated guns have a lifetime about half of what an electromatic gun would before servicing some of these parts on the inside. The needle and the seat still last for over 100 million cycles. Uh, the seals typically last about that long, but you're going to have to disassemble the whole gun and not just change the seat. Speed-wise, uh, depending on your fluid, this may be faster than an electromagnetic gun. There's significantly more energy in this compressed air than there is in that magnetic field on the gun. So if you're running a high viscosity fluid, uh, something is really uh, either sticky or has a lot of solids, these things are a choice over the electromagnetic gun, which is better for the really high speed operations and the very quick uh, on-off cycles. So I think that's kind of an explanation of how these different things work mechanically inside and why some of these pieces are needed and a little bit of information about how long they should last. Thank you.